Hey guys, welcome to my review of Behave by Robert Sapolsky. This is probably one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It's essentially a 600 page book about what determines human behavior. And quite often you hear about in the news, oh, scientists have concluded this gene makes you a psychopath who murders people. Well, this book is extraordinarily honest about what the science actually says. It is true there are certain variants of a gene which in certain environments can make someone slightly more likely to turn into a raging psychopath, but it's a very, very small minority of people, and it's also communicates the limits of science. This is a great book to read for immunizing yourself against headlines that sort of, how do I put this, appropriate science and try and misuse it. It also talks a lot about, well, testosterone and male aggression. An interesting thing here, one of my favorite facts is, Testosterone doesn't make men more aggressive in and of itself. What it does is make males more aware of status. If they're in a neighborhood where you've got to be tough and beating someone up is a good way of showing what a man you are, then yeah, it makes them more aggressive. If they're in a community where being manly or being of high value is being charitable, they become more charitable. That's the same thing with alcohol. It doesn't make people more aggressive. It just sort of removes people's inhibitions. So if someone wants to be, that yes, they will be, because they feel they've got an excuse. And what I love about this book, it doesn't sugarcoat it, but it also doesn't nihilize it. And quite often what you find in articles is they try and make it the most controversial, maybe even slightly upsetting to get you thinking about it and reading and trying to get to the end to find any slither of good news about it. What this does, it doesn't hide the problem. It just communicates the reality. And quite often the reality is, we suspect this data suggests this. There is very little absolute, this is completely what this means. This guy is crazy. He spent about 20 years living with a bunch of baboons to understand how they work, and it's... I, I feel like he's got to be one of the best scientists of our time, just in terms of... He's a neuroscientist, so you have this opinion on him. And he's someone who probably stays in a lab who wouldn't dare go outside, and then you've got this other guy in your head who would live with monkeys for 20 years, and he's both of these people. And it, it, it's just, like, mind-boggling. Now, this book goes from everything. It's cut into two parts. There's the first part, which is basically the dissection of babies. You look at the seconds before, the minutes before, hours, centuries, evolution. And so it's looking at, you know, your thought process in the brain, your hormones, which affect you for hours or days. And it looks at your genes. Then it looks at the evolution. Then it looks at society. And that's really fascinating. And in the second half of this book, what it does, it looks at, I suppose, the application of that knowledge. It looks at things like them or us, metaphors that we use to kill people. It talks about how people of different beliefs tend to have different, well, looking brains. For instance, people are more conservative, generally I believe have larger amygdalas and stronger insular cortex. So when they see someone from another group, there is a certain, there's a stronger impulse that this is bad. It is also interesting that other things, let's say you smell a foul smell, the insular cortex will fire and you are more likely to shift to a slightly more conservative perspective when it comes to politics. Things like that are really, really fascinating. The downside of this book is that it is probably the book for understanding human behavior. 600 and something pages is a lot to read, and it won't be for the faint of hearted. So I feel like the only people who shouldn't read this is most people, just simply because I don't think most people have it in them to read that many pages about something that can go quite complicated. I mean, I've done biomedical science, and I tell you, there is stuff in this book which goes above and beyond, well above and beyond, what I learned. So it's, it's at a university level. We're talking about research that is basically at its cutting edge. And the guy who wrote this book was spending 10 years doing that. So it is a very, it, I'd say it's about as a complete package as you can have for human behavior, which talks about everything from neuroscience to genetics, to psychology, to sociology, to I think even some stuff about economics, but it, it's basically the whole shebang. It's micro to macro, it's, it, it's everything. The guy's an atheist, okay? But he also has a certain respect for people who do believe in God. Instead of trying to smear and say, Oh, the science says that the world will be better off if there are no religious people in it. He takes a very different stance. He says that religion can be useful, but can also be very damaging. He looks at both sides. He doesn't feel like he's doing a dogmatic smear campaign. He looks at it honestly. For instance, when it comes to dealing with people in a community, religion can be pretty good. People tend to be more fair. Something about having a punitive God who'll punish you if you do wrong, that can be very helpful. And generally there is a statistic that says that people who are religious are less likely to use illegal drugs. There is also a fact that there is a great uh, xenophobia of outsiders. And you find that in people in general, that when you have a group of people, 
oxytocin levels are generally higher because they feel a sense of community. That's what oxytocin is. It's not really a love hormone. It's a belonging hormone. And you find that people are generally more, sort of them or us, arguably even more racist, when they have higher rates of oxytocin. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you've got a boat exercise and you've got to throw one person overboard so the boat doesn't drown, that it doesn't sink. If you rotate the jobs people have and the races, you find that higher rates of oxytocin correlate relatively strongly with increased xenophobia or racism. That's what I love, because if you take something like testosterone, which in the media it often seems this terrible thing when masculinity seems this thing that in itself is almost toxic and we need less of it, and you also take something that is often seen as fairly cuddly and nice, like oxytocin, and incriminates it. Now, it doesn't say either are fully good or fully bad. It's all about the context it's deployed in. And I, I love that. Now, if you are someone who is probably more academic, who has an interest in understanding human behavior, this book is the perfect one for you. I would say it's a mix between sapiens and thinking fast and slow. It's like a merger of those two, the perfect combination of both. I've reviewed both of those. You can find a link to those in the eye in the corner. But I, I think this is a better book, but the downside is it's longer and it's chock full of information. He doesn't cut any corners, which is something I admire. Truth is often complicated and that's just what this book is. One final recommendation for this book, what I tend to find is when I have a non-fiction book, I write notes on it because I find that otherwise, if it's complex information, I'm going to forget it in about a day. So if I have notes, I can very quickly condense the 700 page book that it is to 12 pages of a Word document, which means I can come back to it and relearn the information if I need to, and by making notes, it helps it stick more. So that's something I recommend if you read this book. Okay guys, so I hope you have a great day, and please, if you've read this book or read any more of his other books, feel free to tell me what you think of him in the comments section, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and tell me, are there any other books that you think I should read? Okay guys, I hope you have a great day. Hey guys, if you want to subscribe, remember to click the bell. This will notify you when I put a new video up so you can catch it as soon as it comes out. And if you like my videos, maybe you leave a like, tell me what you thought in the comments section, I want to hear your opinion, tell me what you think. Okay guys, I hope you have a great day.